an alternative media source named naturalnews.com, has an article posted on their site that reads, Plumegate, Secret Documents Prove Global Cover-Up of Continued Fukushima Radiation Pollution, dated Saturday, May 12, 2012, written by Ethan A. Huff, a staff writer. A Freedom of Information Act request filed by Friends of the Earth, Physicians for Social Responsibility, and the Nuclear Information and Resource Center has unearthed a shocking series of new evidence proving a deliberate global cover-up of the true severity of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster, and the unfortunate reality is that the mainstream media continues to blatantly ignore this colossal scandal. Private emails, meeting transcripts, and other key documents reveal that both the Obama White House and the United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission were well aware of just how bad things really were at Fukushima from the early days of the disaster, but did nothing to warn the public about it. In fact, the NRC and the White House purposely did not warn Americans about a massive radiation plume that struck the west coast just days after the massive earthquake and tsunami hit Japan's eastern coast. According to information gathered from hundreds of pages worth of private NRC emails, conference calls, and secret meetings, key players in the Fukushima whitewashing campaign, including the NRC's David McIntyre and Elliot Brenner, were hard at work in the days following the disaster, distracting public attention away from it by pretending that a radioactive plume did not exist while simultaneously sending out misinformation to the media. These two, in conjunction with White House officials, actively participated in a criminal cover-up of the truth. A situation that is now being dubbed Plumegate. This massive cover-up of critical information about Fukushima could have saved thousands of lives, including the more than 14,000 individuals, many of whom were babies, that died in the weeks following the disaster. And yet, to this very day, February 1, 2014, the federal government's cozy relationship with the nuclear industry has allowed the injustice to continue as no proper investigation into this dastardly crime has yet taken place. The executive branch and multiple federal agencies, agencies tasked with keeping the American public safe, did their best to hide and cover up information about a deadly radioactive plume and ensuing fallout that was headed for the west coast of the United States from Japan, writes Tony Muga from the Intel Hub about the situation. The link given on the Natural News site to the Intel Hub will not open for me. I get a server error, but maybe it will open for you. I will post the link to Alexander Higgins' blog about Fukushima, though it also has been broken or removed now. All other research links will be posted in the video description as well. I cannot stress hard enough the importance of making copies of any evidence newly discovered immediately as you might not be able to get back to it later. From March 2011 to the present, many links have already been removed. So many videos can no longer be found. Agencies are constantly trying to block our access to any truth about what is happening at Fukushima and how serious it really is. Google, Facebook, and other social networks, mainstream media, nuclear public relation employees, Japanese, Canadian, and U.S. governments are all fully engaged in the plume gate cover-up. These people support the nuclear industry no matter what and they are very proud of themselves when they get away with covering the truth and severity of the negative impact that the nuclear industry is having on the entire world. Fukushima is the biggest large-scale cover-up to date. Governments, mainstream media, industrial leaders, scientists and other government paid experts including health, food and environmental ministries have been lying to us, the public, for decades. Ground studies of the ozone layer began in 1956 at the Haley Research Station located in Antarctica, owned and operated by the British Antarctic Survey. The British expanded their research in the early 1970s to include satellite technology. Yet NASA would like us to believe that they discovered the ozone depletion before anyone else in 1978 when they launched the Nimbus 7 satellite created to monitor the ozone layer globally. 
In 1974, M. J. Molina and F. S. Rowland published a report on the depletion of the ozone layer and warned industry that the use of CFCs would be globally devastating. They called for an immediate ban on all CFCs, but industry just found other ways to disguise the use of CFCs and took their time altering the known offending products while they found new uses for CFCs that they could profit from without all the public scrutiny. CFCs are still being used today. Those airplanes in the sky are not just leaving chemtrails. Aircraft emissions are also destroying the ozone layer. CFCs are used in refrigeration systems, air conditioners, aerosols, solvents, and in the products of some types of packaging. Compounds containing bromide or halogen and nitrogen oxides a byproduct of the combustion process of fuels used by aircraft and vehicles and motorized boats, ships, etc., are also destroying the ozone layer. Whether it is MOX fuel, gas for your car, fuel for your boat, or a heat source for your home, we have had clean, earth-friendly alternatives long before industry started destroying our earth. Money is the god of all industry. The dirtier the industry, the more profits they make. They lie about the feasibility of alternatives only because they can see no way of cheating by cutting corners in operation to increase profits for each new quarterly report. If industry can replace humans with robots, they will have no one to answer to anymore. No more problem whistleblowers means they have a free reign to continue to cause massive depopulation on a global scale. Fukushima is the most serious nuclear global disaster to date and Plumegate is the biggest cover-up the world has ever seen. We have nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. If we the public can expose enough truth, perhaps the Plumegate will end, but it's already too late to fix the Pacific Ocean. It's already too late to stop the 9,000 degree Fahrenheit corium from escaping containment and penetrating the Earth. It was already too late for the Japanese people living near Fukushima by the time they were evacuated Instead of leaving within hours of the nuclear disaster, they were told to leave weeks later as the radiation readings were continuing to spike. Our land, fresh water sources such as lakes, ponds, rivers, streams, and air will have radioactive particles or atoms that cause cancer for hundreds of decades. Rain and snow will be trapping radioactive atoms in the air and bringing them to the ground for as long as wind currents exist. Ground winds pick up surface radiation from land, bodies of water, fresh or salt water, and puts it back into the atmosphere. Burning radioactive waste does not destroy radiation. Instead, it puts more radiation into the atmosphere. Much of the cleanup from the 2011 tsunami in Fukushima Prefecture involved gathering and burning debris by the Fukushima residents. This debris was radioactive and yet the Japanese government ordered the public to participate in burning the garbage because it was the easiest way to just get rid of it. There is no such thing as natural radiation. All radiation is caused by the greed and carelessness of various industries. We all need to occupy our time with some sort of activity as long as we are alive. I choose to honor God with all my heart and soul forever. My physical body is nothing more than a temporary vessel for the deliverance of God's will upon my life. We all have to leave this world somehow. I accept that my death will likely have something to do with some form of radiation caused by the nuclear industry. However, life still has a few surprises left. I could be poisoned to death by one of industry's chemical plants or suffer lung cancers by coal industries. Regardless of how I leave this life, I'm going to fight for what is right for humanity. God is the only righteous one. We, the true Christians, have to try even harder to do our best to mimic His perfection of righteousness in a world that has become wholly corrupt from the highest levels of authority to the churches and private individuals, saturated with Satanism and fried to death by industry. God's army has just one more war to fight before our Messiah will return. Take heart, we are fighting this final war now. The waiting is over. If you are still asleep, your time for salvation is running out. Very soon, it will be too late for you. If you are waking up as you hear this, the first weapon you need to fight with 
in this war is God's salvation. Secondly, God's armor. And then sharpen your sword and prepare for battle against the enemies of God. Prepare to refuse the mark of the Antichrist and to be executed as a result. The innocent blood they shed will become their own lethal poison. They will be thrown into hell and we will live eternal joy in a perfect world where no part of hell can enter. The Illuminati have so many outlets they are using to depopulate the world that we cannot stop them as individuals. We must be united in our cause regardless of faith and we must continue to fight for the side of truth and righteousness. Thank you for listening. May God's peace go with you.